we're starting a last day series because how many of y'all believe these are the last days? Amen. Now, the last days started <laughs> when Jesus left. You know that, right? Because when he did his Olivet sermon, he basically included them in the last days. So the last days started then. Day with the Lord is a thousand years. Two, you know, it's been what, 2,000 years? Well, it's been 2020, 2020 years since the death of Jesus Christ. So to him, that's all the last days. Okay? And no man knows the hour, but we definitely know the climate. Amen? I heard 15, there's been, there was 15 earthquakes in one day. Earthquakes in diverse places. The locusts have taken, I mean, they are eating like they at Golden Corral. <laughs> they are tan Africa up, Jack. Swole locusts. But the plague of the locusts, like the Bible said, and then the pestilence, this coronavirus and whatever's causing it behind it or whatever, but y'all know this isn't even the issue. You know, there are more deadly diseases out there as well. It's just a lot of sicknesses and diseases. And all of these things were chronicled in the word of God to let us know when time was up. There are warning signs, or as the Bible says, birth pains, to show us that a birth is about to happen. And it will be Christ's return for us. And the time and the hour, I mean, we are drawing so close to it. Now, the coronavirus is the coronavirus. But behind the scenes, there's definitely a technological upgrade that is occurring. I've been warning y'all for a whole year almost about the, the, the 5G. Now, I've been telling y'all about it. And 5G is just not 5G, okay? So when I say 5G, 5G is where it starts but they're putting technology in place that can go all the way up to 100 gigahertz, okay? So we're talking about a, a huge spectrum of frequencies. Each frequency can actually affect the human body in a different way. And while they're testing it, people just, you see people just randomly pass out, faint. You have chest pain, you have flu-like symptoms. All of these things are because of the technological upgrade. What is the upgrade for? It's not for a faster internet. They could come in, the, they could go in the schools and do all that and leave people in there. Like they could, they could upgrade you while you're in there. Okay? This is not for that. It's for human tracking. Okay? The mark of the beast. It's flipping and it's changing because if this pandemic becomes as frightful as they are desiring it to be, then you will be required to have identification proven that you were vaccinated to leave your home. So to return to your job, go back to work, you're going to need proof that you've been vaccinated. Possibly. Okay? This just makes sense to me because why would you upgrade the technology to read and track with the ID 2020 if your purpose is not to read and track people? And why would you have frequencies on the light spectrum that are weaponized so that if the people don't do what you want, you can flash a high frequency antenna as a weapon. Now all of these are real things. The Bible calls them the beginning of sorrows, okay? This is when men, get, men are getting real cocky and arrogant and playing God, okay? The beauty of it is, well, if there is beauty, is that God's got us. There's never been a time in history where God's people weren't God's people. He said if it was possible, it would deceive the very elect. Not that it is possible. He said those days will be 
shortened for us. This is scripture. They'll be shortened for us. He said, because if all of this continues, no one would be saved. Okay, so these are the beginning of sorrows, y'all. This is real stuff you're seeing. This, there's no way this can just go away. It's gone too far. This has to amount to something. Even if it looks normal, it's a new normal. Things have changed permanently. Okay, and these are the ambitions of men. So this vaccine, now I know people saying, is that the mark of the beast? I mean, the mark of the beast, understand, I've already dealt with that, told y'all, you already got a mark on something you have, right? We all got logos. We all have chips on our cards, all of that. If they put this in a card and tell you to take the vaccine or whatever, that's not necessarily you pledging your allegiance to an antichrist system, okay? You would have to confess it and denounce God. Okay, so the only way it's going to be what the Bible is talking about as far as, you know, a uh, mark of whether it's a man, whether it's a system, whatever it is, you would have to denounce Christ. There's not going to be an accidental, I accidentally took it because I got a vaccine. So now I'm going to hell and I'm doomed. That's not going to happen. Okay, God is not going to let that happen. The Bible said you have, you're going to have to pledge to his image, and you're going to have to pledge to him, denouncing Christ. Okay? Now, am I telling you to go get vaccinated so you can go back to work? No. Nope. I ain't taking no vaccine, but that's just me. But, you know, my job is different. So I don't know. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't even know if that's going to happen. These are hypotheses, but I'm just feeling like... I just can't see how they're this worried about the spread of it and not feel like they have to stop the spread of it by vaccinating everyone that is potential or everyone that could potentially have it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But that's just me, okay? So I'm not trying to put fear in you or nothing. I'm just saying it's time to pray. Okay, because they're not nice. The elite are not nice. We're all just chess pieces. Time to trust God. Amen? And that's what we're going to do. So, you know, I know people say, well, you got all these theories. You go, Well, no, don't, 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 don't listen. You chose to come here. You had an excuse and everything. And you still came. And you knew what I was going to do. So these are the commercials that they're showing. It's just, this BET ad, I just, this was so rude to me. But check it out. <laughs> Can we be alone together? So let's talk about this social distancing. Y'all good? Yeah. Okay. Acts 2 and 46. And they continue daily with what? One accord in the temple. And breaking bread, how? From house to house. Did eat their meat with what? Gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those that should be saved. You know, when you fill your church up with a bunch of unsaved folks, when these time comes, folks ain't going to make it. Because this is the faith, this is the, this is the testing time. Amen. And this is, this is test time. You know, you got to take a test for everything. And this is testing time. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. I'll let you, you know, go. And right. Amen. Look, everybody like, we ain't got nowhere to go. Where, where are we going? 
We been locked up, I got cabin fever. Been locked up, I'm so glad to see breathing humans. <laughs> Smell breath. <laughs> the church is more than just music and preaching. Is the church more than music and preaching? God's plan for the church, which God created this, it's more than singing and preaching. Amen? The unified gathering of like-minded believers gives us examples of God's power. We see people that have been delivered and set free from all kinds of past sins and issues. In here, maybe sit next to you, some just people that have done things that you wouldn't believe. But look at somebody and say, God forgives. God forgives. These examples, though, help build our faith and encourage our walk. When we're able to see an ex-drug dealer, an ex-wino, do they still say wino? I bet there's still some. <laughs> an ex-prostitute, slut, whore, just an ex-jigolo, ex-jigaboo. <laughs> yeah, just an ex-idiot. Some folks just idiot, was just an idiot. Yeah, I, I can't even explain. I went on drugs, I went on, I'm just an idiot. Made bad decisions, but these examples, seeing these people mature, grow, have families, have wives and children, and teach them differently than what they experienced. These examples help build our faith and encourage our walk. Amen? Amen. Has your faith been built since you've been able to see God change people? The devil likes to make us ashamed of our testimonies and cause us to feel guilty and unworthy even after we have changed. He is the what? He's the accuser of the brethren. And he wants our past to remind us of him. <laughs> That's why he keeps bringing up your past because your past don't remind you of God. It reminds you of him because that's who you were with. But our testimonies can reach many and free those that are currently bound by what we have what? Overcome. Fellowship allows us to use our progress as an example of what? What God can do. Amen? Revelations 12 and 10. This is in the end, the final finale. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is what? Cast down. That's Satan. The accuser of our brethren is cast down. What was his job? He accused them before our God day and night. He don't have nothing else to do but accuse. Day and night. And they overcame him. Look at how they overcame him, though. By the blood of the Lamb, right? Look at somebody and say, Thank God for the blood. By the blood of the Lamb and by the what? Word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. The words of your testimony helps you overcome. What you overcame is what you overcame. So when you speak it, it becomes real, even to others, as they hear. Well, you can do that on the internet, eh, but you can't trust the internet. That's not the same as someone, right, that you're in a relationship with physically, that you can see and talk to. It's not the same. You need a human spirit. You discern their human spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah. Even witches and warlocks know that. When they want to get you, they can't just say something where they are. If they're not around you, they can't do that. 
they have to astral project and send something to you. And it has to get in your uh, circumference to affect you. Can I keep preaching? Though many are being forced to temporarily stream or have online church, we must not yield to this idea permanently. Okay, so some are being forced. We might get forced. I don't know. Forced to have it online, stream, whatever. But we can't yield to this idea permanently. (laughs) That would be the end of God's church. Oh, the hand claps. Your hand's dirty. You need some hand sanitizer. So you can can clap more more vigorously. Try not to splash germs. But we, we just cannot yield to this idea permanently. We cannot make this commonplace and target and forget how important coming together really is. We share accountability, admonishments, and positive energy when we are together and unified. Don't tell me it's the same online. Ain't nobody getting married and spending their time, all their time online. You want to be around that person, don't you? Even your friend, you want, you want them around. It's not, look at somebody and say, it's not the same. It's not the same. I know this generation is struggling with that. Amen. But you can't curl up in the bed with a phone. You can't marry that image. You can't marry that video. You can't marry that video. You can't marry it. Amen. It, there's a difference. Or folks would just be getting married online and leave it like that if there wasn't a difference. The internet cannot duplicate or suffice for this. We need physical fellowship to discern and care for one another properly. Amen? Amen. Give us the option. Internet or real life for somebody we care about, which one you going to choose? Real life. Because you know that there is a difference. Gifts of discernment, prophecy, and healing all work more effectively when people are together. Amen. It's a big difference in touching and agreeing than laying your hand on the flat screen. Right? There's a difference. Yeah. Yeah. God's church must stand, and we must stand up for our rights to gather in his name. Amen? So whether you have to do it temporarily, whatever the case, while this is figured out, all of that, okay. But this cannot, look at somebody say, it cannot be permanent. (laughs) So if that's the plan, I'm sorry, I can't give you that. Because we do not believe the internet and live is the same. Amen. 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 They trying to turn our planet into Wally. That planet where everybody was floating around in them. (laughs) With their own screen. Talking to each other. Sitting right next to each other but talking on the screen. Amen. Amen. We must trust God for healing and not allow the media to make us fearful about joining our brothers and sisters in fellowship together. Amen. Amen. We just can't. We just can't. I mean, because a virus, if it's going to spread, it could spread with you just running in there and getting some chips. You, you, you have the same propensity to have it, mean, the same odds to have it if you flying somewhere, if you on your job somewhere, whatever. Six feet 
don't matter the distance if they touch something that's around you. If you touch it, I mean, come on now. So, I mean, where does the fear end here? So we cannot be passive about this, but we must show resistance and fervor when fighting for this particular right. Amen? So we just can't be passive and let them say, ah, no more church. Matter of fact, that went so well during the corona crisis, we'll just go on and keep it that way and use those buildings for something else. God forbid. I know somebody's thinking, man, that'll never happen. You didn't think this would happen. My parents didn't think they would have the technology to human track. They thought the mark of the beast was somebody writing 666 on your hand or your forehead or stamping it. They never imagined that they could put that technology in a vaccine and it could live in you forever. In liquid form. And have all of your information in you. It's called nanotechnology. They can put nanites in your body, just like our robot, nanites. And those can have all of your information. And this new technology can track you and know who you are. Yeah, I mean, folks didn't believe that would ever happen. Can I keep going? I believe the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. I do. Amen. Look at somebody and say, have no fear. No fear. Fear is not of God. That's of the enemy. 1 Peter 5 and 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Take the oversight thereof. This is to the elders and leaders of the church. Not by constraint, but will willingly. Not for money, but of a what? Ready mind. Ready for what? Ready for what's going to happen to the church. He left the Holy Ghost to be in the church and the people to come together and operate in the spirit of God. That was his plan. He said the gates of hell will not prevail against it. This is his plan. To leave the church for fellowship. Put elders over it. Put a pastor over it. I tell people all the time, the seven churches of Asia were, were all judged by Christ, and he didn't close any of them. Out of the seven, six were messed up somewhat. Only one was perfect. But even the messed up ones, he didn't close them. He told them, repent. Why did he just say repent? Because he wants the church here. I need the church. He needs the church. So he left it. He rebuked the pastors. Y'all get, get it right. Amen. Quit being lukewarm. Shut Jezebel up. All of the stuff he told them to do. But he didn't say close it. Ain't kick nobody out of it. He didn't punish the pastor by taking his call from him. He's never done that. Gifts and callings are without repentance. Man, if we had to deserve the call, nobody would have it. <laughs> Wouldn't be any preaching if we had to deserve it. You had to deserve the parent. You wouldn't, you, you'd be disqualified. Your own past would stop you from telling your kids anything. But mama, remember when you was young, you, ah, boy, that's just a beat down. Don't you, don't you be no accuser of the brethren. Get your tail whipped. But yeah, no, this is the, the grace of God. And so he dealt with the church. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being what? Examples. We have to be examples to the flock. Especially in times like these, the flock needs to see how we respond as carriers of God's word. Amen? They need to see how we respond in the heat of the battle, facing persecution and tribulation. How we respond is vital. 
And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth what? Not away. But I love that when the chief shepherd. So that tells you he's talking to shepherds to feed the flock. This is his order. And then when the chief shepherd shall appear. That's why I can't let anybody tell me, oh, the church age is over. Oh, the, you know, church, this is what all this is about. The end of the church is over. We're just going to go to church online. And that's going to be permanent situation, all this. No, you can't tell me that. You can't tell me that because the shepherd is still a shepherd, and a shepherd can't shepherd sheep online. The only place you can lead them online is to somebody else for them to listen to because that's what the next video is going to prompt them to. The enemy is attempting to stop us from gathering for fellowship. Did it take rocket science for you to figure that out? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be the virus or whatever they're using it for, but the devil is just trying to stop the fellowship. I mean, but there's so many other things. You think the church is that important to the devil? The church is the only thing important to the devil. Who are we talking about? We're talking about the devil, right? They got kicked out of where? heaven and couldn't experience what you can experience now. Where is he going to be? Who is he going to persecute? Who is the great tribulation for? The sinner is already going through the tribulation. The lack of Christ in them is already taking them through. The devil is after the church. It's what he wanted from the beginning. You're the only one he's upset with. He ain't upset with sinners. He's rather pleased with some of them. <laughs> He's upset with the church. He's the enemy of Christ. Why would he be fighting anywhere else? So for somebody to tell me, man, you believe they would do all of this just to stop the church? You haven't studied history. You haven't studied history at all. Every great crusade of believers were attacked and destroyed by the governments of their times. It was always the systems that came after the church. They didn't come after the general population because the general population bought into them. It was the church that stood against them. And the rules and the laws were devised against the church. Fellowship is dangerous to the enemy because believers on one accord can bring about unique manifestations of God's power. Believers on one accord. Just by us sitting in here, all believing the same thing, there's certain things the devil cannot do. <laughs> Just certain things he can't do. Because there is power in us being on one accord. Y'all believe that? Yeah, by us catching hands, touching and agreeing on one accord. In the book of Acts, that brought the greatest manifestation of God's power to the earth. Them gathered together on one accord. They couldn't have done that online. So it's dangerous to the enemy. He's afraid of fellowship of real believers on one accord. Because it can bring about unique manifestations of God's power. The devil's end time plan has always been to divide and conquer. Social distancing is not just about a coronavirus. Don't ever think that. They want the internet-based collective consciousness to eventually replace social gatherings of people. That was way back, what, part nine? Truth Behind Hip Hop? When I talked about collective consciousness and the hive mind, I told y'all what they were going to do. 
They need to upgrade the technology so that they can get us all on the same page. When we're all thinking the same, and they can scare us all, spook us all, tell us all this, tell us, and we all moving with whatever the internet is saying. You talk to some people, you say, hey, brother, you know. I had one guy, I was in the, in the store shopping and uh, in the uh, depot, restaurant depot, was getting stuff, and he was working in there, and he looked at me, he's like, man, what you think about this virus? I said, I'm not too much worried about this virus. What? <laughs> I said, I, I, I'm not that worried about it, man. I said, I feel like I already had it. I was really, really sick. I said, but man, my immune system, you know, I take the right stuff, I eat the right stuff, I whatever. He just looking. And I was in the freezer part, so it was real cold now, so I was like, all right, then, you know, let me go get this chicken. And so I'm walking over there where the chicken is, I'm getting the chicken, and here he come. So, 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 I mean, like, everybody ain't gonna die? I said, no, everybody's not gonna die. Really? Oh, you've been watching a lot of TV. And that's what it is. Social, he's been, he's been indoctrinated. He had no hope. He had zero hope. Yeah. And that's a lot of people. A lot of people are thinking that way. Just giving up because of how bad it looks and sounds. And that's what they want. Yeah, that's why they're shocked when they see a crowd. We didn't get to y'all. Y'all ain't not, y'all on the frame. Well, you know, we, I mean, we're cautious, but we just believe God can heal us. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, if we catch it, I'll catch it around, among the brethren. I don't want to catch it in the depot. I don't catch it around the freezer and the dude asking, I don't catch it from him. <laughs> I'd rather my hands be lifted up unto the Lord from which cometh my help. I mean, it, and I believe my body can, I mean, I, I believe I'd be all right. Yeah, but they want the internet-based collective consciousness to eventually replace social gatherings of people. The hive mind is how they will assume control over us and all of our information. The cloud. That's why I don't want you to own anything. They don't you own movies anymore. They're in the cloud. They sell computers with 64 gig hard drives. That ain't enough for me to save my book collection. So when I order the two, the, the four, the eight terabyte, they almost call you, hey man, why you need all that room? Seriously, and then they try to charge you. Oh, I remember the upgrade for my last computer $2,000 for an eight terabyte hard drive. 2,000, but they'll give me 128 gigabytes free. Yes. Now, understand something about memory. The chip doesn't really change. It's still a chip. So the price difference, they just say, oh, let's just, we'll just charge. Because it's, I mean, the chip size, everything. I mean, what? So what is the charge about? The charge is a deterrent. Because they don't want you to get it because if you get that much memory, you're gonna put your information on it and not the cloud. Listen, when your information is in the cloud, they have it. And you willingly do it. Everything about you goes up there. You mean track, they're gonna Really track humans? They're already tracking humans. You mean they're gonna look into my stuff? I mean, I have people tell me, oh man, unplug that, unplug that. Why? Because I don't want them to get my stuff. I mean, we would, I just, I don't want them to get my stuff and then grab their phone. <laughs> Shoot, I mean, they ain't getting my stuff. <laughs> you don't realize this is a smartphone? What part of smart? 
Don't you understand? They know every, they got you. You did it voluntarily. And they'll use it when it's convenient. But they got you. That's what cloud-based is. We think it's convenience. Anywhere I go, my stuff just hit it. it I, I just get it. I just get it. Even if I get it anywhere. I can be in the toilet. I got all my stuff. I can be in Spain. All my stuff. Just, oh, man, I left something at home. Let me get it. Let me get it. Yeah. And you see it as a convenience. But they see it as we have your property. Not only do we have your property, we have who you are. We have your identity. Somebody hacked me and stole my identity. They already had your identity. But when we're, well, let me, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But with an internet device, it is collected and used to profile people. This will make human tracking and surveillance easier for a what? Y'all don't believe a one world system is coming? <laughs> one world. Yes, what they used to talk about. Grandmama, great grandmama. Remember, they used to sit us down at the house and tell us about the one world government. And it didn't even seem possible. They desire to minimize physical interaction. Uh-oh. To build a cloud-based unity that can be influenced, controlled, and monitored by the elite because they know the power associated with a group of believers being together of one mind and one motive. So they want to minimize physical interaction. Yeah. They can't get your information that way. But when you're in solitude, everything you're doing is either going into or coming down from the cloud. First Thessalonians 5 and 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and do what? Edify one another, even as also ye do. Got to be together to do that. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which what? Labor among you. You got to be together to do that. And are over you in the Lord. Got to be together to have that. And admonish you. Have to be together. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace. How? Among yourselves online? No. Among yourselves in your gathering. Be at peace. Now we exhort you. Y'all know he's talking to the church, right? A actual church. Thessalonica. A church. Okay? So don't give me that. He's talking to all believers. No, he's talking to a church. Now we exhort you, brethren. Warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves first, among whose selves? The church. And then to all men. This is Dallas. And this is God's promise over Dallas. And when I saw this picture, I forgot who's... You sent me this picture, Ted. Ted sent me this picture. And when I saw this picture, I saw God's promise. And it looked like he was even protecting the city with his promise. His promise to never leave us, Amen. nor forsake. I know somebody, well, no, that's just a promise that he wouldn't destroy the world. Just, just come on. It's a promise. <laughs> so, and listen to this. Because I, I got scripture for it. All God's promises are what? Yeah. So if one promise is true, all promises are true. Amen? And this was his promise to the city. And I saw it almost as his hand was over the city. And I'm in this area. And his hand was over me. And his hand is over you. And he's mindful of us because he loves us so much. All of us in here. He loves you, and he's mindful of you. 
Amen. 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 Summary. The best saying in 2020 right here, Jack. Forced isolation when you are not sick is not quarantine. It's not the only quarantine when you are sick. Social distancing stops personal witnessing and being live examples for one another. Keep your distance. You can't walk up and share Christ with nobody. You got to keep your distance. They even have bit emojis keeping your distance. Saw that last night. Keeping your distance, bit, bit mochi. With a, with a heart, like I love you, but stay back. <laughs> Social distancing stops personal witnessing and being live examples for one another. I know some people, well, you're just minimizing the flu. It's, I mean, minimizing, what is the, the, the virus? You just minimize. I'm not minimizing anything, I'm maximizing the need for fellowship. So if one does it to the other, that's not my fault. This is important to me. Well, you just want money. No, no. No, we could save money by streaming. You give online and we'll save all this electricity. What are you talking about? It costs more to do this. Social distancing stops personal witnessing and being live examples for one another. It stops touching and agreeing with one another. And that's what the Bible tells us to do. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, Jesus didn't touch the lepers. He healed them on their way. Okay, when you get leprosy, we'll apply that. Know they thinking it. Oh, crazy. And you wasn't witnessing no way, so hush. <laughs> it stops touching and agreeing with one another. It blocks the yoking power from the Holy Spirit with one another. You don't believe there's yoking power when two or three are gathered in my name? There I shall be in the midst. What do you think that is? There's power in numbers. It literally, it stops literal church and fellowship with one another. And it's so crazy. You know, we believe the, the, the biblical side of this, but the Satanists know better than this. They know when they get ready to do their sacrifice, they have to have a specific number of people present in order for it to work. They know when they're short of power and they have to include someone else to make it work. They'll cancel it if they don't get enough people because it'll be ineffective. I've studied all this stuff for years. But we just, oh, no, 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 just take one. Okay, one. <laughs> it literally, it, it stops literal church and fellowship from one another as well, or with one another as well. However, as a remnant of believers, we must use this time to be a blessing to others. Have you picked up the phone and asked somebody, do you need something? Y'all doing okay? Are you short anything? Y'all good? Check on those in need, those that may need help. They want you afraid to go and help people. Stay home. Cash app them. Y'all don't see what's going on? I mean, it's a form of population control. I mean, you can't reproduce over the internet. 
I don't care how cold-blooded you are, bro. You gonna have to pay her a visit. Those that may need help. Share and be loving and kind during this hour. Watching out for and visiting one another. Doing what? Praying for one another. This is what we do during social distancing. We just take what the enemy is trying to do and flip it. Let's flip it back on his head. Here's how we do it. We use this time. Now listen. I don't know how long it's going to be when they, if they quarantine you in your home and you can't go anywhere. National Guard is out there, whatever. You don't want them problems, so you'll probably stay at home. <laughs> Amen? You're gonna just, you know, we'll just, we'll just see how long it's going to last. I ain't trying to go out here and, and deal with the green trucks <laughs> with the rattling engines. Amen. So, so you quarantine, you stand in the house, that's not the time for you to go out and loot and shoot. But here's what you do while you are in that, you know, if we are forced to that state, and many of us are working from home now, we, we pretty much quarantine anyway because there's nowhere to go. You're not going to get essentials, there's nowhere to go. So, you know, by default, we pretty much quarantine in the house. So here's what we do. We flip it on his head. We use this time to enjoy being home with the family. Some of y'all don't even know each other. Don't even know each other. Your eyes are brown. Grown. <laughs> yeah. Then look at TV and watch sports so long. Don't even recognize your wife. Girl, I done fell in love with you all over again. <laughs> really? Yeah, because it's like you're a different person. But use this time to enjoy being home with the family. Take advantage of it. Listen, use it to learn about each other. <laughs> look into each other's eyes. <laughs> look, at, look at somebody say, eyes can't lie. Can't lie. They can't lie. They can't lie. They can't. They just can't. They just can't. So look them in the eye. You've been avoiding that. All you know is inside the NBA, you know Charles Barkley's eyes, and Shaq, and Ernie, and Kenny. You don't know your wife's eyes. Mm, Kenny lying, see? Kenny lying. The eyes don't lie. Man, if you don't get, get in there and look at each other's eyes. Talk to your children. Look in their eyes. Ask them questions. Talk, listen, and what? Love. Share your heart. This might be the first time you've ever opened up to anyone. Now you don't have an excuse. Talk about the things you have never talked about. Share the things you have never shared before. Get to know one another more and prepare for the times that what? That lie ahead is uncertainty. Use this time for God and not for yourself. Pray for, pray with one another, and oh, look, y'all, finally, overcome the obstacles that have separated you. Finally, this is your time to deal with it. You can't go nowhere. She get mad. Where she going? <laughs> go to a friend house. They gonna send her back. We don't have no tissue. We don't have enough tissue for you. You can't be here. You need to go work that out. 
Jesus is going to come back. Why are you holding the grudge? Jesus said, no, no, the Lord's going to come back, man. He ain't coming back. He's coming back for a church without spotter. You need to get this stuff fixed. Amen. How does people have attitudes and hatred in their heart and all of that at this hour? Do you know what time it is? It is an opportunity to not use sports or work as a deflector. These times can help us to defeat issues from our past and move closer to God and one another. Amen? I know the liquor store is empty. I know the black and mild section is empty. Elder said this morning, ain't no weed. <laughs> weed man just out. Yeah, because people, people don't have their hope in the right place. So they're looking for substances to buy them time. Time to not think. Time to not deal with issues. So let's throw a wrench in the devil's plan of distancing and fear mongering. Let's just throw a wrench in it. God will get the glory and we will be better moving forward in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews 10 and 21, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with the true heart and full what? Man, not even wavering, full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us, I don't let go. Look at somebody and say, don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let, go. let us hold fast. <laughs> hold fast the profession of our faith without what? For he is what? Faithful. That, I mean, do we believe this? He is faithful. Look at somebody say he's faithful. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to what? Good works. Colon. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as people are trying to do. But exhorting one another, so much the more, as ye what? Y'all see the day approaching? Yeah. Everyone stand to your feet. I believe God speaks to me, and I believe he leads me, and he moves me, and he stops me, and he lets things stop me. And, but church today, coming together today, just wasn't on his agenda for me. I mean, not coming together. That just wasn't on his agenda. He wanted us to come together. Amen? Amen. And we're going to come together until he tells us we can't. Because that's who I trust. That's who my faith is in. And that's what I've lived my life for. Y'all, I'm in this. Okay? I'm in it. And I'm for real about it. I'm not. I'm, I'm just for real about it. Especially in this hour, it's more critical in this hour than ever before for us to stand for the assembling of ourselves together.
I appreciate all of your care and concern and prayers. Appreciate all of it. You standing in this hour for your family and being examples for your children and all those things. And wherever God is going to take us, whatever God is going to do, we're just going to, it's going to follow him. Amen? Y'all with that? All right. Let's bow our heads. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for this body of believers. I thank you, God, for them. Many of these men standing here have a straight face, but may not even know where their rent is going to come from next month. Some of them can't work. Some of them just don't have. God, I pray right now that that your grace and mercy will cover these believers, God, in this hour. God, I'm not crying out of worry because I'm not worried. I'm crying out of love because I feel it. But God, you, your promises are yea and amen. You said that the birds of the field don't worry about it, so we shouldn't worry about it. You said that the lilies of the field don't worry about it, so we shouldn't worry. God, you made us, you care for us, and you're coming back. For, you love us so much that you're coming back to rescue us and take us away to be with you forever. And that same love that will end it all is with us right now. So, God, I pray right now that your care, your concern, your love will continue to surround us, to cover us. So we'll feel your love in times of persecution, in times of attack, in times of doubt and fear, in times of travail trouble we're troubled on every side and yet not distressed persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed you are with us God you are with us help us to be with you in Jesus name Amen. Amen.